Um, it's that time of the evening already. <laughs> and Tammy always does this. Um, she, she goes out of her way to work my emotions. She, she knows the relationship I have with this young girl called Saul. Uh, it's a very um, emotional and spiritual one. Um, you know, the, all the speakers of today, I didn't pick them, by the way. The team did that. I didn't know what they were going to talk about. But from every single one of them, there was a message for me as um, <laughs> who, who, who's got the mic, the volume. I was about to ask if I'm audible enough. You, you, you know, you could just like fix yours and then I can try. Yeah, let's, let's, let's use that. Um, so, yeah, uh, Lebo Gunguluza spoke about uh, three different types of leaders. And when he said the soul leaders, I can identify with that. I, I don't work hard. I identify the right people. Uh, God gives me visions, and then I identify the right people to walk the journey with me. And in this room here um, that we've all gathered in tonight are those people. I want to first acknowledge my team, Tim Sowell. I'm not going to call all of you. Um, those who are uh, watching from the various countries where we've expanded to this year, um, Botswana, there's Kuda in Nigeria, there's Karika. And first time I met uh, Mary Rose tonight, I mean, we hugged four times, four or five times. We, we, we were so happy to finally meet. Um, and, and of course, my, my, my South African team. So I'm just, you know, reflecting back on what some of the speakers said. Um, the astronaut lady <laughs> said, um, <laughs> she said, don't hate the game. Um, love the game, change the game. I started with despising the game because of what it does to women in leadership. I was one of the women myself. So with that being said, I wanna welcome all of you because you know I know that um, you're not entirely welcomed until the owner of the house says welcome. So you are welcome um, and thank you for honoring this invitation. Thank you for being part of um, tonight's proceedings. You look fantastic and the way you look, you make it look extra special. So I feel pity for the people who are, who are watching from home because they don't get to see um, you know, the glory that I'm seeing in this room. Going back to um, what I was saying, um, 2021 marks the seventh year of our existence as Saul. The number seven is one of the most significant in the Bible. Some scholars say it, it denotes completeness and perfection. The year was um, 2014, the month was March. I was, I think, 28, 10 and 29 that year. I had been in, in management for close to five years and promoted maybe three, four times. Every chance they got an opportunity to put a black woman in a position, see, but was must stay. Um, but every time I, I rose to the occasion, the rooms just stayed the same. I was the only woman in those rooms and I wasn't happy. I kept on thinking, okay, maybe they are right there at the top somewhere. So keep pushing, maybe you'll find them. Maybe we're just not here. You know, maybe it's a boys game um, down here, but you go further up and you realize that the status quo remains the same. Um, that year, I took, up on myself, took it up on myself to say, it's not gonna stay the same for as long as I live. I uh, prayed to God, and I said, I have this huge, huge, huge feeling that I can't change this dynamic. Um, I prayed. I wrote on my diary. It was March. I only registered the company in October, but I had the name all along. And I started speaking about it in future terms. One of the things I wrote in my diary that year was that Sawul, at the time, it was South African Women in Leadership. I wrote that Sawul will grow to become a global organization that is all about empowering women and bringing them closer to their light 
and who they truly are and deserve to be seen for in society. Fast forward to 2021, seven years later, the year of completion. We are now in Africa, the rest of Africa and the diaspora. That is testament to the women that you've just seen there, the countries that were mentioned, even prior to that, um, the, the 15 countries that were mentioned um, in Africa and of course the, the diaspora are testament to the fact that we are now a global organization. So I say to you, thank you so much for indulging me. And for those of you who support the vision, I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me because for me, as I've said, um, it's, it's a spiritual journey. It's an assignment from above. I don't take it very lightly. And in fact, my team knows if there's anybody who comes with uh, you know, weird shenanigans. Um, I, I'm, I'm quick to say you, maybe you need to remove yourself because the people who serve here are all on one mission and that is to empower women, to elevate women and to showcase that African women have more than what it takes to run boardrooms, to run corporate Africa, and in fact, global organizations. So congratulations to the top 30. I'm really proud of you. Um, and I think now we can get into, uh, you know, what we've been waiting for. I, I hope my speech was not dampening because I'm sure you can, you, can, you, can, you can sense that I'm a bit, I'm in, I'm in the zone um, where Saul is concerned. The Saul Top 30 Trailblazers Awards um, are celebrated in line with our campaign, Saul Vision 2030. Um, nominations uh, were for leaders who are pioneers of transformation, gender equality, diversity, and inclusion in their respective fields. Women who understand the importance of lifting as you rise, and they actively champion the empowerment of other women and girl children. That is why they are not just CEOs, they are not just MDs of these big, uh, big conglomerates, they're actually women who are intentional about making more room for more women. They are not threatened by the next woman, they are not intimidated by a younger woman coming through. As a matter of fact, they go out of their way to empower and to enable the next woman to gain access um, to the spaces, the limited spaces um, that we find ourselves in. And in fact, the male dominated spaces that we often find ourselves in. So we are here to celebrate them. And without further ado, um, I'll share with you uh, just briefly, the judging process entailed quite a, rig a rigorous um, selection process where from 400 um, nominations we chose, we went through, I think, three stages of selection to get to the top 30. That's how difficult this year was to choose the top 30. So you, you, you must be proud of yourself. For those of you watching from home or sitting here, you making the top 30 women in leadership in Africa and the diaspora uh, really is a big deal. Now, to get to the top 10, I said, you know, from the onset when I started this initiative last year, I knew I was not the right person to choose from such big numbers who the top 10 winners can be. I don't have the qualifications, I don't have the authority. So I put it back to the people that nominate them, which is the voters. Um, so there's a voting process, and then they re required as leaders, as prominent leaders who are recognized by their followers, um, their, their direct reports, their communities, to engage the process. So if you don't engage the process, um, you know, it's unlikely that you'll make the top 10. Engaging the process means sharing, um, whether it's on social media, at you know, your company newsletters. Um, some of them go as far as, um, you know, it, their speaking engagements become about that journey. Um, and also whatever it is that we, you know, we ask or we challenge the women to do throughout the process, it's about a three months process. That engagement is very important because it carries 25% towards your, 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 your uh, judging scale. Um, and then of course you have another 25% for the judge's discretion. So we pick, um, there's a company that we work with in Europe, um, Meaningful Business. So they help us with um, the discretionary process. And then there's my favorite part, the interview process. Oh my God, this year was a feast. If you have time, just go to Saul Pulse of Wisdom um, YouTube. 
you will not be disappointed. I am not an interviewer, but I love Oprah. So I watch a lot of Oprah. I dug deep. <laughs> I really, I, I put, you know, I pushed them into uncomfortable places. I mean, these are powerful women, uh, powerful executives who oftentimes when they share, uh, it's usually about, you know, their company PR or reports or stats or whatever, typical, typical um, media trading. In these conversations, I didn't give them questions. Um, a person would arrive five minutes early or whatever, and I just tell them there are no prior questions. We're just going to have a conversation. And I want to know you the person behind the trailblazer, because in that there's a young girl, there's a young woman somewhere who's watching and they can see that even us, we have challenges, we have miscarriages, we have divorces, uh, we have families to run. We are not perfect. We might look perfect in those boardrooms like we know what we're doing, but life does throw us in the deep every now and again. And I, I, I appreciate that, um, you know, they didn't resist they didn't push back they really indulged me so that's i say that's that's my favorite process and then that carries 25 percent as well um before i get into the top 10 i can see you guys are anxious uh, it's like, like just get to it already <laughs> um we have sponsors not a not a lot not not just like last year not not big anything um but we have oh there we go we actually have the biggest sponsor you know one could ever ask for which is god that's that's without him this does not happen for me so um if you're wondering how we do it they, that's the man above um we do have a book from our winner of last year um mizinga melu she won the overall prize she's the ceo of absa zambia and she went on to write a book so you get a copy um from her journey and then we also have um a book from uh, Joanine, who is also an author and a life coach. Um, funny enough, when she was sending me that book, she said to me, I actually coached Mizinga. So guys, I mean, when you hit her up, you never know, you might just be uh, the following year's winner as well. So those are the books that we're giving away tonight. Um, the three main prizes are from my other company, which is Border Academy um, Europe. So I'm taking three women with me to Spain when COVID permits, or if COVID permits, ideally next year, um, as soon as you know it's, it's clear to go, we, we will have our annual board um, summit there. Uh, it's a three-day summit. So I'm taking three of the top three winners the overall winner and, and had two um, runner-ups with me to Spain next year. Um, accommodation paid for, uh, I think you sort out your flight. We'll, 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 we'll talk about that. But yeah, those are the two prices to the value of 140,000 Rand. And then um, I do have a small prize um, for a young woman who's sitting in this room as well, uh, who wants to maybe pursue board um, training and leadership as well. Um, it's a simple attendance about training um, ticket, either to South Africa or Spain, depending on where you're coming from. Of course, I'll provide accommodation. So yeah, that's that's just for somebody in the audience. I don't know. I forgot to tell Tammy. I don't know how she's going to choose that person. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Maybe she. Hey, who 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 wants? Oh, no hands. Okay, I'll take it. Uh <laughs> Okay, so are we are we good to go? Are we are we waiting to see who the top ten are? Okay, uh, can I lady drum roll? No, 